Welcome to Get the Net, a fishing podcast that takes a deep dive into competitive events, fishing news, tips, tactics, and most importantly, interviews with some of the most interesting and in-tuned anglers from Canada to the central U.S. We're leaving no stone unturned to bring you the most raw and authentic talk talk. My name is Jamie Bruce, and while my resume says bass, my frying pan says walleye, I'm no stranger to the multi-species realm. Whether you're puttering on tackle, driving the bus, cutting the grass, or killing time in a 9 to 5, try to give you something in every episode to take with you on the water at the very least bring you a few laughs all right we don't got to make this formal it's uh get the net round five something a little bit different tonight we've got uh gussie in studio and by studio i mean a dirty corner of a garage that smells like leeches so he's he's our first in in-house guest and uh mostly because i tried to get a hold of him at lake fork and he wouldn't talk from the road. He said he wants to do it in person. So, what's up, bud? Well, I've done enough of these where the internet sucks, and then it's no good for anybody. So, I'm not very techy. We got some Starlink at the house now. It works really good. I can watch. I can actually watch uh, YouTube videos, and it doesn't freeze every two minutes. But uh, we got some big trees in the yard, so I got a little lap. So about every ten minutes. At the, whatever the cycle is it'll freeze for like a hair yeah and uh it, it it i mean it might not drive you nuts but it drives most of the podcast people nuts so yeah and i kind of just wanted to come and hang out in your garage we've had lots of good times in here yeah fair enough i can attest to your internet sucking i remember you used to have to download movies in the winnipeg airport yeah <laughs> no for real we but we got good internet now but for some reason just doing like zoom stuff or whatever it it uh it's not very good but yeah Oh, well, anyway, happy to have you here, bud. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, we'll probably just usually just like walk through a few local things and then we'll dive a little bit deeper. Um, first up, Lac de Bonnie. I'll pull the results here. I'm like, we're two weeks late to the party here, but still got to cover it. Uh, it's in Manitoba. It was the first bass tournament of the year around here. Uh, really weird. Ted Stooner and Steve Ellie won. Yeah. Weird. You'd believe it. 1658 big fish with a 5.2 so you can only keep two over 40 centimeters so they probably had two two five pounders and three just over two which is like as good as it gets and look at that there's some other other five pounders too yeah dylan normando elliot pansiera they had a really good bag finish second i would be expecting to win if i came in with that bruce hein and mike forrest congrats on third and just because I like this guy, I usually don't give fourth place shout outs, but Steve Chambers and Eric Cooley, they, uh, they finished up fourth. Uh, hometown favorite, Aaron Weeb. Aaron Weeb, Aaron Weeb. Okay, he's pretty deep. Better luck next year, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I have to throw him a chirp. He chirps me any chance he can get. Did he get his limit? Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, well. him and Kerry did good. 13 and a half pounds. That's usually what wins Falcon Lake. So, like, that's a stout bag. It was just, you know how it is. It's a whack fest. Probably had a couple of three and a half or three and three quarters. And yeah, that's just stout fishing. Shouldn't throw too much shade at air. And I had uh, COVID a couple of weeks ago and I watched all of the, the 39 hours. They got a pretty good show going and I was truly entertained, even though I've seen it before. So even though I'll fire a chirp, I still, uh, you know, I got to shout out that to you and Jay. You did a good job there. Um, yeah, congrats Ted and Steve. Women's walleye tournament. That was uh, Saturday. <laughs> 87 teams or like 83 teams. It was Unreal. at the tent. It was like KBI. That's awesome. Was anyone reaching out looking for tips prior to? Uh, I had a couple requests for a guide boat, but I was, I was, uh, yeah, we had stuff going on this weekend. So, um, but no, that's great that they do it. And it looks like everyone had a good time. Um, Ashley's winning streak finally came to an end. Yeah, she shut her down. <laughs> her and her and Bree got third. Uh, she had won the last three tournaments she fished, so she's had a pretty unrealistic sample at how tournament fishing is. And um, yeah, you know they were happy that they ended up third, but like the mood in the boat was not good because it's live updates on that fish donkey app. So they, you know, oh yeah, you know if you you know they needed another twenty two or they're gonna lose. So that oh, yeah. kind of sucks that. Uh, 
that element out of it but it was super cool like it was at the tent it was like being at women's kbi you know i was at the tackle store the night before and it was uh women teams rocking through like crazy and it was just like they're running the show it was awesome so there's two categories one one division has uh you know two female team members with a boat driver who's not allowed to do anything like um, I used to think it was like you're guiding, but that's not the case. They make it really clear. You're just like, you're pretty much their little bitch for lack of a better term. Yeah. They tell you where they want to go. You can't help them with anything, which is fine when they get a pike. Like it's nice not having to help. With yeah. That, but, um, <laughs> so now let's pull the stats in that. Was Rago hanging out down at the tent at all looking for, uh, dates or anything? No, no it wasn't. Sightings? No, it wasn't that much like KBI. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta pull this up here. So like I said, there's two divisions. There's the women only, and that's truly like the badass division that's running their own show. Ashley and Bree did that last year. Uh, she had a little 17 foot boat and they won it. I was uh, I was super proud of them. Uh, Cheryl and Cheryl and Gabriella Wishart, uh, I think they're from Portage La Prairie. They're staying at Crawford's for, for a cool. while, I guess. The Crawford's crew was super pumped, so Congratulations, ladies. Tracy McDonald and Jackie McAllister. And that's catching them, too. 67 and a half inches. That's like a, you know, a 22 and three-quarter average. Don't check my math, but it's somewhere around there, uh, which is roughly what the girls had last year. Um, Heather McMurphy, Donna Mills, 60 inches, third. And then the with driver division, which is what uh, Ashley and Bree did this year. Uh, Danielle Brown and Lael Lunum. 73 inches, crushed them. Uh, right behind them, Jess Kolshak, Carly Burton. Um, familiar names, they did really good. Only lost by, geez, a quarter of an inch. That's pretty tight. And then uh, our girls, Brianne Becker and Ashley Bruce, uh, finished third, 71 and a quarter. They had like a big 28 incher and like a 20 and a half and 22 something. And like, <laughs> they do not hide the celebrations. Yeah, I saw some of the videos. They're having a good time. That's nice to see. Yeah, if you want to hear some screaming and shouting and find some new walleye spots, go out during the women's walleye tournament. Any f bombs? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, I'm making a loop tube video as we speak on it, and there's a lot of lot of bleeps going in it. Nice. So, or I might just put like an explicit content thing on it and and roll with that. But no, good good job to uh, all the organizers, sponsors, and. Congrats to everyone that fishes. It's super cool. Like there, I don't think there's anything like that around, especially not, um, you know, not to that size. So, yeah, that's impressive. Eighty something boats. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Ashley and Bree were boat eighty seven, and uh, in the morning we had to watch every single boat except for one take off instead of us. And they were like, "Oh, we're boat eighty seven. I was like, "We well, signed up like last week. They won it the year before, and they had to get on the waiting list this year." Just wow. dra dragging their heels so much, like yeah, pretty brutal. If you're gonna fish, sign up. Yeah, so pony up for next year. I'm pretty sure it's it's gonna be happening. Uh, yeah, the hell else is going on around here? See all the Lake Master boats at the Days Inn. Uh, I did when I was coming into town last week. Yeah, they're doing Shoal Lake. Are they? Yeah, they're doing all Shoal Lakes, which that is sucks. crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah it sucks for the locals especially sucks for gussie probably more than anyone yeah it's, i know i i i could drive around out there in the dark more than i could on lake of the woods probably so it's uh but yeah for a lot of years you were the track line guy you gave one to i think brian way back in the day and then he passed that one to me and that's the only reason yeah. we can run around out there yeah but yeah. yeah they're they're crushing lots of rocks they've got pretty much just a pallet of like props and <laughs> uh, they got i guess they have a welder on staff and lake master tells them like they want primo mapping that's you know that's kind of hummingbird's thing is is being dialed on the map and they tell them to ride up until you crack that thing they want a good chart it's the best too and i mean i there's quite a few of the guys i fish against have the hummingbirds on the floor of their boats just so they because a lot of the places where we do have the lake master mapping it is the best and uh they just you know they have it for the mapping so it's it's pretty slick and yeah. just like lots of cool stuff you can do with it the shading and um and all that but yeah that'll be be neat to see yeah you just feel like you're at such a disadvantage when you don't have it 
I didn't realize down south like how much better it is there too. I figure, you know, just thought because it was down there, everyone would kind of have the one foot contours, but the stock maps on mine were bush league. I had to do like the, the chart select thing and get some maps down, you know, in Sturgeon Bay and Tennessee and all that. Cause yeah. you can't handle looking at that. No, no good. No good. No. So yeah, anyway, thanks to Lake master for destroying their boats and destroying Gussie's home lake. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to get that chip. Um, yeah. Speaking of boats, new pro V bass is sitting here now. I was, uh, just flexing some accessories on Gussie. You got a nice little floor in there. Some can yeah. bat lithiums, extra console, that thing's coming off. She's going back. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley liked it for the weekend, but I'm getting rid of it. But yeah, super plush rig and really can't ask for a better boat than that, eh, bud? No, looks good. Looks awesome. Your camera guys must really like the, the third seat or well, the fourth seat. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, just the, just the smooth ride. Like that's the compliment I get the most from the marshals and the, and the camera guys is just the... You know, you're not doing this when you, you know, yeah. when you hit waves and running. It's a, it's a, it's a comfy ride for sure. Yeah, you're playing the long game and you're running these too. Like, you don't see a whole lot of sixty year olds in glass bass boats. They usually make like a transition to oh, smooth yeah. moves. Here you can feel it. I mean, you're destroying your neck already as it is on, uh, you know, with like forward facing sonar. So why not save your feet a little bit when you're yeah. cracking across the lake? Yeah. No, I get a lot of, you know, like in Florida, Texas, wherever we're fishing. I mean, every, not every tournament, but like every other one probably get, uh, get somebody that wants to, that came to the way in just because they want to check out that boat. So yeah, it's a good rig and fishing machine. Yeah. Yeah. It's sweet that, you know, you've been getting one for like five years. We rig her up every year. I've get, been getting one the last three years, like the amount of time that you can rig these things up in now is quick like we've got her down to a science yeah <laughs> you know where every every little nuance every little trick and yeah yeah i mean everyone uh you kind of have to run your own your own high-end wires now for like forward facing sonar and everything and they make it easy for that so pretty sweet um yeah there's uh wsl lund on the lake is this weekend starting on thursday so if you want to check out a line i don't really know what the details are i'm going to probably swing down there thursday night which is when this i think it's off out. oh yeah 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 oh okay yeah. i'm not very well briefed on it yeah no because of the flooding and low inventory it got canceled Okay, well, if you want to lun, you better jump on it. Um, <laughs> and if you go down to, you know, if you shut off your your phone as soon as you heard uh, Lund on the Lakes on Thursday and you go down there and you're standing on the dock, uh, you yeah, know, you can blame me for that. I owe you a boat ride. Yeah, I could be, yeah. I got told it was canceled, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well. La yeah, last week, so I, I mean. I would have been the one standing on the dock then. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right yeah a couple more things can bat lithium uh if you want to check them out gas is super high right now i've just been i'm a nickel squeezer so i just rock it into every bay like put the troller on high and hop around the point i know gussie just got a different set of lithiums too it's i mean you hear game changer all the time but it's uh they uh they're a real thing so if you want to deal on those canbat.com promo code bruce5 uh btfishing.com crazy thing the girls this weekend and i should have mentioned this earlier they, like I said, I can't give them any info. And if I could have, I would have told them the opposite of what they did. They were throwing leeches at shallow walleyes and not catching anything. Yeah. Like, you know, caught one and like they could see them on the graph and weren't catching anything. And Bree picked up a quarter ounce smeltinator with the three inch Z-Man minnows, like the, the ultimate staple. Yeah. And uh, started cracking them like every cast. So yeah. Hainsey's it's like, unbelievable. Yeah. Ashley's like, screw the leech. She grabbed her Ned rig on a crusher jig and started crushing them. And there's a lot of pollen on the water. So they were like flipping their leeches off lots. And it was, you know, now with this, they could just jack it through. Yeah. And they were just plain eating it better. It's, I mean, it's more yeah. of a thing than anything. So if you want to, if you want to deal on BT, use promo code, get the net and, uh, yeah, btfishing.com. You can run the same gears you yeah that's all i've been throwing i've been home for about a week and i've been out four or five evenings and that's yeah that's it three inch swim bait on the harvest hey yeah been eating some walleyes uh it had been a few months so you know yeah i like eating them and 
I like catching them. I've been getting a few big ones, but it's crazy. I mean, like two, literally two to eight feet. People that have never used like it, like it's almost like you can tell whoever you want because the people that that have used meat their whole lives are probably still never gonna change, and that's fine. But uh, you can go and cast up shallow, and it's incredible. And you catch bass and pike mixed in. It's just good action. But there's a lot of walleyes. And I think that, like, if people tell you the fishing's getting tough on Lake of the Woods or not very good, like, it's because a lot of them are shallow. Like, I think way more are shallow. All the crayfish out there now, it's just, it's stuff's changed. But, like, I don't know that I've ever seen the walleye fishing, like, as good as it like, yeah. actually is. The last few springs and, um, you know, my hands are all cut up and beat up. Like, we caught, like, 50 last night. And, yeah. And, uh. That, like I literally haven't caught one in more than eight feet of water and probably caught like 150 walleyes in the last week. Yeah. And it's just so much fun. <laughs> like, yeah. The combo of like the Z-Man baits. And... You need a dab of glue. A, 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 most important thing with, with uh, the, the Elaztec baits is a dab of glue uh, just to hold it on. Yeah, and, uh, that's when that smelt and eater's sweet too, because it's got that conical head. It just holds the glue in there. Yeah, perfect. holds it on perfect, and uh, that's and, and it takes a bit of practice to get the baits on straight. They got to be on nice and straight, or they're gonna twirl, twist your line. Uh, but if you get them on straight, glue them. You can catch fifty fish on one bait unless the pike snipes it, or you you get snagged. But yeah, quarter ounce. You don't want to go too light because then the, the swim baits just work better if a little with a little bit of weight. Yeah, yeah. It's simple. Oh, Cast it out, reel it in slow, tap, bump the bottom every once in a while, and when you get a bite, I mean, it feels like you're getting punched in the arm. It's it's so fun. Yeah, and if you have someone, or if it's a little bit slower, like if you have someone that's really used to live bait, just give them a Ned rig. I like it on a quarter ounce football, and it's just like at least that they can just you know leave it and they'll still eat it. Yeah, it's just like a plot, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. It started off as like, wow, I'm catching walleyes on a Ned rig to like, that's just what you grab to go walleye fishing now. When I was a kid, like my grandpa, I, I used to love fishing with him because like my dad took me lots, but it was just meat, go walleye fishing, troll a spinner or use a jig and minnow. Yeah. My grandpa had a box full of lures and like he would catch one walleye a year on an artificial bait. And that was like the highlight of the summer. Like I wish he could <laughs> was around to like see how good it is now and um you got to try it i mean you can't you can't go out and and bring minnows with you if you've never done it you got to just go out get a couple get a pack of ned rigs pack a little swim baits and uh go fish with them once you catch a few get a few bites you'll it's it's you'll get some confidence and it's good it's legit yeah not even that i mean if you're like getting good at walleye fishing and you know it's june right now you can easily catch 80 or 100 fish a day if you're using bait like, I used to use bait pre-fishing for, like, the walleye masters. I'd use, like, 80 bucks a day in bait. Yeah. You can you can get away with, like, two swim baits and yeah. two, two smeltinators now. Yeah. So, if you're, uh, you know, if you're a nickel squeezer, that's a consideration, too. But enough of the walleyes, bud. We're talking bass. You're on one of your heaters. <laughs> well, I've been surviving the last few weeks. That's few, not surviving. Few tournaments. Uh, yeah, no, it's been going pretty good. It's funny, like uh, 10 years doing this and uh, it, every day this year almost has been the most, like it's been a grind. Like the whole season, the, f the fishing's been grindy just about everywhere. I've had a couple easy days, but um, you know, we get three days to pre-fish for each tournament and then the fish the tournament and the, like these last few it was going out like i like the thing is you can we all find a lot of good stuff in practice but the the thing that a lot of people don't realize is you might not get to fish anything you want to fish in the in the actual tournament like lake fork i mean it's so fun to fish there but it's frustrating because it's small and there's a lot of guides out there there's a lot of people visiting and fishing and then we've gone there four years in a row now so like most of our guys know the lake pretty good. They know where a lot of the good spots are. And yeah. I mean, if you can get the third day, I got on this point that like in four years of going there, I've never been able to fish it in the tournament before. I, I, I fished one place first and caught one or two and I'm just running up the lake and like, wow, no one's on that point. I wheel in there and start catching them. And I, I put my poles down. I was pulled down in three feet of water, casting up shallow yeah. and caught like 30. 
like the most pumped spot on the lake and yeah. it's unbelievable but that's you know you always want to look for like the inconspicuous little little places that other people are going to overlook and and i do you know we do all do that a lot around here but on some of those places i mean you just gotta gotta fish the best spots and that's where you're gonna catch them yeah it's kind of like sturgeon bay like mm -hmm. you can go like eight or ten hours now in in between juice spots and not catch a bass mm -hmm. and then you can just sit there all day and mash them is that you think it's been so tough like you've been on the mo three most community lakes in north pretty America. much yeah pick chickamauga and lake fork like yeah. i can't think other than like gunnersville i can't think of yes. anywhere else yeah. that's fleeced harder no all three places are brutal like for for just there's guides and just a lot of people fishing every day on on each each water body so um yeah it was it's been kind of tough fishing but um but yeah been able to grind out some decent limits catch a few bit mix in a few big ones and it's been yeah been going good i'm in pretty good shape obviously want to be in the classic next year and uh you know we're we're we're, we're you know pretty getting getting close so yeah got a couple small small tournaments coming up so i'm excited for that and um yeah well no, no is, excuse that's is that as close as they've ever been to home it's like nine hours so yes yeah, same as lacrosse pretty much as eight or nine hours too but yeah I'm probably looking forward to walking a little more than lacrosse yeah oh yeah <laughs> i want to yeah. you know hopefully the next two tournaments go pretty good and then i'll you know should be in good shape and not have to not have to go into the last one with a lot of pressure or stress i i've only been to lacrosse mississippi river in wisconsin once we had an flw tournament there uh, at the end of 2017 and I I think it was the only day of the whole season like for the first two days that I didn't get my limit but on day two of that tournament I only had four fish and I missed the Forestwood Cup by nine points and yeah. if I'd have caught my limit that day I would have made it so I've been like b pretty bitter with that place yeah um, I remember that since. day because I was sitting there with Brian and he uh, texted you and asked if he wanted you to fill out the KBI entry form yeah, that's, the Forestwood Cup used to overlap with KBI. Yeah, yeah that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> Just knifes you, hey? Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I had my two KBI trophies plug in my ears. So. <laughs> Shots are fired. Well, that's good, man. And like I said, you, it seems like you more than anyone else, like when you hit a slump, which your slumps are like getting 40th or 50th now. It's not like the triple digit days or anything yeah you'd kind of stay there for a little bit and then you hit a heater and it just like some of these have lasted like seven or eight tournaments yeah no i've uh it's funny how it goes and it's like some of the tournaments where you don't expect to to catch them are the ones where it works out the best like i had the the first couple tournaments in florida i actually thought i was going to do pretty good i had pretty decent practices but you don't, you know, you maybe you rely on an area or a spot too much. And that's, that's the biggest thing that can kill you. Sometimes it works out, but like, you got to be able to have a pattern, a program to, you know, these last few tournaments every day, I'm fishing new water during the event that is just, you know, matches up to where, I, what I've been catching fish on. And you kind of got to be able to do that. This is your first year with like first full year of forward facing sonar, right? Cause you got it late last year. Yeah, I got it in June last year. Yeah. Okay. But so a little bit it. of a, I had it for most of the season around here. So I had a, you know, pretty good enough time with it where like, I don't ever want to be in my boat without, without having it on there, you know? Yeah. But we got to touch on this a little bit because more and more I put out like a live scope setting video the other day and like got a lot of like flack for, you know, pricing like the, it's kind of pricing people out of the game is one of the views on it. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, if you want to be highly competitive, you pretty much have to have it, but there are a lot of exceptions and I think you proved it probably better than anyone. And it's something that really wasn't highlighted that much. Uh, biggest tournament win of your life happened without live scope or mega live or anything like that. Three mm -hmm. quarters of the field had it. Mm -hmm. and you caught deep small malt without it then mm -hmm. you've got like you know john cox greg hackney don't have it mm -hmm. competing mm -hmm. so i mean to hear that people are kind of getting priced out of the game that's that's been something that's been floating around forever and we got to talk to you about that because you you know you didn't start on the silver spoon when you were a kid no. bass fishing like you just kind of worked with what you had right like walk me through the the early days like 
competing against some of these big wigs in with minimal gear. Yeah, I mean, we like I to start out. I mean, I hate the the cost of everything now, and it and, yeah. it, and I you know I, I hate that part of it for for a teenage kid or you know somebody that's just kind of getting into it because you know you see our boats we kind of do it for a living so we we want to and and it's what we love it's what we do with all our free time i mean we want to i have every you know we both have every bit of technology that we can on these boats um and the people that we're competing against all have it too so we kind of you got to have it but um you know as far as like fishing tournaments around home here uh and, and just going out to like have fun the boat first of all the boat doesn't catch the fish i mean uh and you can still be very successful without having um you know every everything that we do on these boats but yeah i started out i mean i got more time in a tiller boat than most people do um you know obviously when i was eight or nine years old uh we had a cabin out on echo bay on lake of the woods where i grew up and I, I mean, I was eight or nine, 10 years old and I was taking that boat by myself and, uh, 15 horse, seven rude, uh, 14 foot Lund. And I actually had a little 12 volt trolling motor and I would, it was on the back and I would actually stand on the back seat on the bench and I could run that trolling motor with my foot and I would just back troll along and fish and, yeah. um, and that's how I started out. And then. Uh, when my dad and I started fishing the KBI, we had an old 17 foot Starcraft with like an 85 Johnson on it and, uh, really efficient. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Take us an hour to get from Kenora to Echo Bay. Um, but we had a cooler for a live well, filled it up with a bucket, changed the water with a bucket and, uh, you know, and then at like 17, 16 or seven, 16, um, our neighbor out at our cabin, Harley Hansen, and, and this guy t- used to t- we used to fish the Shoal Lake tournament together. Um, he's an amazing guy. He still still has his place out there. He's in his 80s, but um, he had an old 17 foot uh, tri hull bass boat that um, that I and it went around. You know, quite a few people around Kenora had it after us, but yeah. um, but that was kind of the first bass boat we had, and I mean, it was just a a skinny little thing and you know put put a lot of hours on that Jess Swenson and I finished second in the KBI we were 16 in that boat um and uh and then yeah and then I just wrecked a couple of my dad's boats in my late teenage you know early 20s and uh and then (laughs) you know finally finally got a nice Lund in in 2007 and and haven't wrecked anything since then yeah I I like that, you, you know, you kind of work your way up through boats and that's just, you know, kind of how it was. And like most people in their first set of tournaments were using coolers for live wells. Like I remember Reynolds and Dubchuck fishing fast and for box and doing well with a, with a Coleman and a, and a yeah. live well pump and a tiller. Like when I started fishing, I didn't even have a trolling motor. I'd put my foot on, on a six horse and go, you know, flip trees yeah. with like mono. And uh, that's just kind of how it was. And now it seems to like kind of have shifted a bit where, you know, a a 17 year old will look at um, all the gear and be like, well, I can't compete and just kind of throw up your arms. But I mean, and if that's your attitude, then you don't want it bad enough. I mean, that's, if you, if you got stuff better to do in the summer than to, and you know, you don't, if that's your excuse to not fish the tournaments then don't come and fish them. I mean, we want to fish against the people that, uh, that love it like we do. And I mean, I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm kind of, there's a lot of like, you know, I help out with the KBI as a, on the angler advisory. There's a couple of us that do. And just like some of the emails and whining that they, that like the, the poor directors have to deal with and respond to is just like blows my mind. I know. And, uh, I know it's torturous and it seems to be getting a little bit worse. Like, and I don't want to doom and gloom it, but like no. the wine factor is getting cranked up. Um, but I mean, it's, kind of the reason I asked you about the boats is cause I, I, I did want to send the message that like, you don't, you're not going to start out with a shiny glass boat you know, unless, uh, unless someone buys it for you, but you're not just going to be 15 and show up in a shiny rig with every piece, every piece of electronics. Like 
there's lots of guys that start kind of from the bottom and fish their way up and you just got to want it. And, and you're not going to start out your first year and win any of these tournaments around here. Like no. that's the reality of it too. You got to put your time in. You learn 10 times faster um, fishing in the events because you got to, you're forced to be out in maybe conditions that you don't want to be out fishing in. You get to see what, what some of the guys that, um, that are doing well, you see what some of them are doing when you're out there and, uh, you got to learn, you got to be out and learn. I mean, I get the biggest thing, if you want to make a somewhat, some kind of a living in the fishing community, tournament fishing, guiding, making, I mean, the making video part is questionable, but, that's uh, next. we'll put that on next, but, um, you got to be able to catch fish. You gotta, you gotta be able to like go out on, you know, and not just on your one home lake all the time like if you want to get good you got to fish different places like when i go out fishing i very seldom go to like a place i know i can catch fish and you're the same i'm sure like yeah yeah, yeah you, you, we're just always you're always looking for like the next thing and just different ways to catch them like when i pull up to a spot and i catch one on my my ned rig or my little swimmer a bait that i know i can catch them on the next i immediately have another rod right here with something something new, something unique. And I want to see if I can catch them on that. And, and just, you know, you're always trying to learn out there and that's, that's what, uh, that's what you got to do if you want to get better. Yeah. And I mean, guys have it easier than ever now. Like you touched on the video thing. Yeah. There's no seat. I mean, there's not, there's very few secret baits. I mean, in our tournaments around home here, like my rods are always on the deck when I come in. I don't, it's not secret baits. It's, yeah, it's, there's, that's kind of like, it's almost like a thing of the past. There's secret tweaks and there's small, yeah, there small are, but innovations, but not like making good casts, being quiet in the boat. I mean, just a lot of simple things are what it, you know, doing that right is what, yeah. you know, paying attention to your sonar. Just lots of little things are, are way more important than, and putting your bait in front of fish too. If there's no, if you're not putting your bait in front of fish, it doesn't really matter what you're using, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, feel, I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a short curve now and I, I don't know. I just want to talk to you about it cause you've come, you've come up through it. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, uh, you know, I hate hearing the whining about, uh, the, you know, change yeah. this rule or that rule for the tournaments. Like at the end of the day, the same people are going to, you can, change the rules however you want but yeah or people saying i can't compete because i don't have a live scope like just become a shallow water expert until you can afford one because that's where the fish are going to end up a bunch of them yeah i feel like a lot of people learning how to fish now are like totally reliant on that thing you know and mega live live scope and like there's you know i was out for dinner the other night you look in the guide boats like these kids have have scope on these like that are worth more than the I guided boats. for you you know all through high school and college at Ash Rapids, Crow Rock, Wiley and Crow Rock would have graphs on their boat but yeah. we never ever I never guided out of a camp boat that had a GPS. I never had a GPS ever for that. Yeah. Map, paper map. And uh Ash Rapids, I mean it's the best part of the lake to fish. So it was, never, it was always good fishing, but like most of the time never had a graph, like never had a depth finder. Yeah. And I came up late to the party there, but like you, McNanny and Rydberg, Swenson, like Riedler, all those guys came, you know, you were like the step before. So you're all good at, at navigating. Like I've totally lost that. I have no se- like my sense of direction sucks just because I stare at a Tamagotchi that shows me where I'm yeah. going. And I totally miss that part. And I feel like, that's happening with with the forward facing sonar and when the fish are you know they're gonna start hiding better they're not gonna be obvious way off the off the bottom out deep and it you're gonna have to be shallow too and i feel like a lot of that is getting lost yeah and especially this year number one lesson that i've learned fishing down south and this is where i've had a lot of problems over the years is when these places flood down south it's the simplest thing ever you go to the bank and you get start flipping but fish the the fish will go in like when it floods down there like the you can actually go into the trees it's um but there's going to be a lot of fish shallow this year that's going to be a that's you could be able to everyone will be able to fish shallow all year this year that's the best tip i could probably give give people for every species of fish 
Yeah, I Maybe wasn't sad trout, about the but... water coming off other than like the docks. And the yeah, it's and too bad on the, but... the damage, but the fishing is going to be is going to be fun and pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you can take like a flipping jig and like that clean jig is sweet. That's all I've been using. Like you just yeah swim bait, you know, cast Texas, it Texas goes through anything. Bait. That's all you, all you need, and it's uh, I think it's going to be a bit of a reset on the on the derbies for just like you know being able to fish shallow again and. Um, yeah, new zones are going to be play a little more probably. Um, large mouth, maybe. Large mouths are going to be a, a, a much more of a factor probably this year for, for sure. Yeah. Especially like sh the Shoal Lake tournament coming up in a few weeks. Like that's that's a lot. All the large mouths want to be shallow still. That like, you know, once you get to KBI bass and half the population wants to be on some rocks maybe. But, uh, but when it's, um, you know, early june and july i think it's yeah it's it's super fun fishing up shallow yeah but is that they're gonna have a good turnout for that one is it how's it looking i, I don't know i think so i don't care i'm gonna be there that's yeah. i look forward to that more than just about any tournament of the whole year yeah. just for fun fishing and like the days are long i love the the love to pre-fish a few days out there and weather's nice yeah it's just the I fishing's just coming around there. so good out there too yeah fishing's like, good that you know that hit a tsn turning point it's sick now yeah no, be... it's it's so fun yeah yeah okay um, yeah the kid and i are gonna be there so um <laughs> we're we're excited that's uh that's one of jeff's partners and that's uh that's one thing i've got to compliment you on too there's um you know around here in these team tournaments uh a lot of times people will like you know, like in KBI, I'll fish with Brian, who's, you know, a really good angler, and, and we'll kind of stack the team a little bit. Uh, but in a lot of tournaments, it's just fun to fish with someone who doesn't do it all the time. Like our buddy, the kid, he'll be jacked up. Like he'll be dropping the net quick as every hook set, hey? Dropping his rod, grabbing the net. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it depends if I yell at him or not. Like if I'll, I'll, I get fired up in the boat, so if I yell at him, then he'll get a little more timid maybe back there. But uh <laughs> yeah no we have the best time um i can't yeah it's two of my funnest days of the year so it's our buddy carl ingstrom and uh and he can fish too like he yeah. he knows he pre pretends like he doesn't know how to you know but he can he can run a popper and a marabou and um whip a, whip a wacky rig around and you know catch he puts some fish in the boat it gives you a little more extra motivation to catch him because after like I, I won a couple of little tiny small tournaments with him. Uh, Gussie won Shoal Lake with him twice, and he lays the ultimate flex on the competition out. Oh yeah, he'll be <laughs> chirping Brucey and whoever if you know if he, if he wins, and he's he uh, yeah. We're hearing the best like one liners of the year that night, and he'll he'll have a good time. So yeah, that's why we love fishing with him. But it's uh, but yeah, like I fish with a different partner in pretty much every tournament around here and it's yeah. that's what it is for me i mean i'm i'm i take it serious for sure and i want to win and i want to do good but i it's it's different than like fishing the elite series tournaments like it's way like i'm fishing by myself in those five grand u.s entry yeah. fee like it's real it's a real deal if you mess up it's it it hurts and it sucks and you know you get to fish around here with a buddy for the weekend and um, it's, it's all about like, I go have fun no matter what. And, uh, you know, I say that, but I feel like, do you think it's that fun for them? Cause I know like when it's good, it's good. But like, there's some buddies I'll fish with and like, I know I'm being an asshole and like totally focused on, on catching them. And I always wonder, I was like, is that <laughs> can't be that fun. For I them. mean, I have my moments where I get <laughs> fired up. Like I've yelled at like all my partners at one time or another in the boat <laughs> yeah. for sure. But like, but, uh, no, nah, I mean, I, it's still, I think I tell, they all know me pretty good enough to yeah. know that I'm not like anything in the heat of the moment. Isn't like, yeah. And I don't so. mean, I wasn't, it wasn't just talking about you. Like I'm the same. Yeah. Like I've definitely yelled at all. I, I pulled up on a, on a hump with Rob B one day. We'd ran like 40 miles to get there and we pulled up and, uh, they started, <laughs> they're eating Cisco's on it and oh, like yeah. a big one came up and he's halfway through a bologna sandwich and he's pointing and yelling big one. <laughs> I was like, well, maybe you should have a.
rod in your hand instead of a bologna sandwich. Yeah. Yeah, that would <laughs> infuriate me for sure. Like stuff like that, like the real common sense, like That was his one like hiccup in in like 10 years of tournament fishing. But yeah, was, and that's after that it's funny. over, like those are funny stories and I I'm not. Like I don't after something like that happens, I'll be mad for like a minute and I'll say something and then like two minutes later, like I don't let that stuff bother me. I I get over it fast. But like the best one I got with Carl we're fit, we we pull up to like my favorite our favorite largemouth spot on Shoal Lake and uh, he fire I'm like yeah fire fire your popper up there and he fires it up to the sweet spot and like two pops gets a big smash and he sets the hook and his line breaks and he like pretty easy and uh, he's like Pike and I'm like. I was well, I was watching it and I'm like I yeah I think that was a I I I I don't really see anything but I'm like that was a bass bud and uh, we fish and we just sort of it was calm and pretty clear you could see pretty good and I as I'm going along I look down I'm like oh there's a popper going through the water and like a not a giant but a three to four pound largemouth is swimming with and you could see the popper stuck to the outside of its mouth or like perfectly clear. <laughs> And I'm, you know, so then I let it, let them have it, which is fair game. Yeah. Yeah. Savvy, Savvy had what same thing happen one time on a, on a spot in KBI fired a, he tied a leader. This was when we first started tying leader knots, like, yeah. like a long time ago. Dirty and, old uh, uni to uni. Yeah. He tied whatever he tied and, uh, he whipped his bait up on this and it was the same, a one caster little sweet spot where we'd caught him before. And yeah, gets a big smash. And um, it was actually on a rock with a bunch of weeds matted up all around it. And uh, it, the fish jumped, came, broke his line, and uh, the leader knot broke. So yeah. like same gave him, gave it to him for a minute. The next day we go back to fish that spot, and the fish had thrown the bait, and the popper was sitting. Um, just like pushed up against the weed mat, so we got the bait back at least. The fish didn't have to swim around with it all day, but yeah, that's a painful part. Yeah, but no, it's uh, <laughs> it it happens. But yeah, I mean, I I for sure when when the tournament day happens, I'm I'm gonna be there early, ready to go. But it's I I do like live for that stuff. Like I that's what I love to do, and um, you know, if it I know there's I get it from some people that they they maybe don't think I should fish because I, I do it more than other people, but, um, yeah, that but man, I get that. And I work nine to five Monday to Friday. Yeah. Like, like, no, it's just cause you're good at it. And it's, uh, you know, but I don't really let that stuff bother me. It's it, it, it is well, what it is. I mean, like you might not realize it till after you get your ass kicked by you in a tournament, but like, that's, that's setting the bar and you know, someone did it for you before you came along, whether it was, you know, Kaz or Stuner or buddies from the U S like you take John Leesman, Dave yeah, Heike, most you, dominant Lake of the woods, bass tournament anglers ever by yeah, far. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how many times in a row they won it. You probably do. That was before my time. They only won it, I think three times, but they, they, they should have won it eight times or how, you know, however, yeah. like a lot of mechanical issues, but like, they were catching large mouths with like when we started in the late nineties, early two thousand, large mouth fishing. I mean, it was uh, the heaviest rod we had, twenty pound mono, and that's what you had to use: a jig or a, some kind of top water or a, you know a spinner bait. Yeah. But the heaviest rod we had in yeah. the boat, pool cue, pool cue, whatever, twenty pound mono, and it was so weird because they had come into the docks and like. Just like for, I bet you eight years in a row, they were leading after day one, leading after day two. Yep. Maybe the boat would break on day three, yep. uh, whatever. They had maybe a couple bad years, but they would have all spinning rods on their deck, just little worm hooks and no baits. And we just <laughs> thought they, those, those guys are putting their largemouth rod and they'd have all largemouths. Like they would never, hurt. if they had a smallmouth, it was cause they, they, you know, scrambled and had to catch 10 pounds in yellow girl cause they didn't make it to whitefish bay. Right. But they would have all large mouths and, uh, but they were catching them, they, you know, probably using Sankos and, you know, worms yeah. and they had an Allison boat that was a rocket. And, you know, I got to know those guys pretty good in the years later. And Dave, I still talk to quite often, but, um, 
I think they just ran around and hit a lot of trees and, and they, they knew they've learned way before everyone else. Bill Melvin that who Josh Peacock used to fish with too, same, same deal, but they, mm -hmm. they recognize that the large most love the coontail, like where it grew on rocks and those spots. I couldn't imagine how good the fishing was back then. When, if you, if you knew the, yeah the deals. Cause like when we figured it out, it turned into catch, you know, we'd go out if you caught a large mouth, that was cool. And then, like once we learned how to do it, it was like 50 a day. Like we caught, it was a lot, we caught a lot of large mouths. Like it was incredible how many we used to catch in a day. And now it's, you know, a good day. You might catch 10 or 12. Um, it's, yeah, it's a lot a different than, day. yeah, it's a lot different. Yeah. But I mean, because you got that ass whipping, if, if like, if they hadn't showed up, if we didn't have these big competitive tournaments, then. You yeah, know, I wouldn't 11 have. pounds a day would have won and you never would have you never would have needed to get out of bed at, at five o'clock the, the nope. next day or your next day off to go nope. learn how to catch them better so I mean and that's what you learn I mean it, that's little things like that exactly that that uh you know if you want to beat Jamie in in the KBI yeah you better be you better be pre-fishing a few days and if you only have two days the weekend before to practice then you really better be at the ramp at 5 a.m and fish till dark and cover yeah. some water because that, yeah. that's what everybody all these guys that are that are catching them that's what most of them are doing and uh you know there's not there's not a lot of people getting lucky and and you know being on the on the stage at the end of the weekend yeah and i mean when i was younger like when i was 22 fishing kbi like we have you know party the night before fish till like 3 30 or 4 like saunter off and then and now it's like you know i'll get like especially because i've been saving up days off to do the opens and things like that where it's like you know you might not get any days or and have to go after work at dark or if you get one day like you better be on the water at dark and that's that's kind of something i learned from you uh you know back I should tell the story back. It was, I was probably 20, you know, maybe 22, maybe around the same time. You were just going down to the FLW opens and, uh, and you were looking for a co-angler, you know, someone to share the boat with. I was just like a broke kid. Like I didn't have any money and, you know, as cool as it sounded, it wasn't really in the, in the forecast. And Jeff was like, Oh, like pay off your plane ticket. And, uh, you know, flew my broke ass down there and, <laughs> And, you know, we went fishing and I got to see like, okay, you're not, you're not coming off the water at six o'clock. Like you're coming off when it's pitch black, you're fishing every single second. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's kind of, if you want it bad enough, that's what you have to do. You yep. might, you're not going to get to sit on the couch and watch Survivor <laughs> at the end of the night. You're going to come home, nope. plug your boat and go to bed and do it again. And, and the guys that do that aren't around for very long. Usually like it, it, it's, uh, you know, the, 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 like all these guys that I'm fishing against are like that kind of most of them. But, uh, like when I was fishing FLW, like Jacob Wheeler, like you couldn't, you, you try and beat that guy to the boat ramp or stay out later than him. And it, and it, you, you never would, it was unbelievable. Like yeah. every day, it just like people, people like, you know, I, I don't know everyone's opinion on Wheeler, but like the guy is un incredible what he does like yeah. dominant and it's not because he's lucky or because no. he gets help or because it's because he's like, he works hard yeah. and he just, he, dude, when we were down at, uh, in Arkansas in like 2015, he was still fishing FLW. It was the off day. It was either an off day or like he had to get off at three and he was walking through like parks, like, uh, whatever, like state parks, looking at the shoreline, looking for bass on beds. Yeah. Like that's, you know, and that, and he was always in the gray, but that's pushing it. And, but yeah, that's... I mean, if you want an edge these days, you better find it. And I'll, and I'll tell you, um, you know, that open down South, I, from being around you enough and, and, you know, just knowing that you gotta, you gotta work as hard as you can, like don't <coughs> leave any daylight on the table. So I was, you know, I was coming off at dark and the only other trucks that would be there was Brad Leitner. Every other truck was in the elites. Yeah. Like that's not an accident. Yeah. You know, there's maybe there's only 20 guys from the elites in the tournament or 10 and five or six of their trucks are still at the ramp. Yeah. Like it's a thing. So, yeah, no, they, the, those guys are, uh, they're not, you know, we're all kind of friends and like, you know, you get along and, and stuff and I've made great friends with a lot of those guys, yeah. but like, it's very competitive and like, these guys are, 
they want to steal your money. Like they, yeah. it's, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, we're lucky to have you in there cause you can, you can bring that and transfer that ass whipping up here and just keep raising the bar of, you know, what everyone's got to do. So, but no, I mean, it's good. I mean, I, I, your name comes up all the time with people, uh, that I run into and, um, and that's what I, I say, like, I, I, I seldom beat you in any of the tournaments around here anymore. And there's lots, of, it's not just you, but like, there's lots, it's competitive. There's a lot of good anglers and no, that's um, not true. But when, you know, 10 or 15 years ago, when I would, I would pre-fish all these tournaments around here for a week or 10 yeah. days. And then, you know, I would win a lot of them. It was, yeah. that was, that's the recipe. I think the more time you can spend on the water, I mean, that's the number one that's the number one thing. And I still, you know, I pre-fish and whenever I can in that, but it's not, it's not like as much as I obviously wish I, I could all the time. Yeah. I mean, you know, back in the day, you never had a grass to cut or like no. chores or anything. No. It was just whatever. Fold yeah. and whacked. Just see you later. Yeah. I'd fish and fish and fish and, uh, and it, you know, it's kind of worked out, I guess, but. Yeah. I'd say it's worked out pretty good. And I mean, around here, like, we kind of take you being in the elites for granted because I don't think people realize how hard it is to like get in and how competitive it is. Like there's 93 people in North America that are in it or 93 people in the whole world that are in it. Like that is a freaking small number yeah. considering there's, you know, hundreds I, and hundreds of people gunning for it. And like everybody, I, I am grateful every day that I get to do it and get to do what I do, but it, like it's stressful and like, it's just because you make it like that's super hard. It's so hard, so yeah. hard to make it. But, and then once you make it, you get, you get two years, you don't get kicked out after your first year, but like we're, where it's at right now, 13 new guys are coming in every year and 13 are getting eliminated. And we lost, we hadn't, you know, the last few years with COVID and everything, they hadn't kicked anybody out, but last year they did. And, uh, it was, it was tough. Like some of my good buddies that, that had made fishing, you know, got kicked out. It's based on your points average from, from since 2019. Yep. That's how they're doing it. And, but if you're a rookie, you don't get it in your first year, but in your second year, you, you're getting kicked out. But like, if you finish in 70th place, like right now we got emailed a, uh, a list the other day and you got to be averaging around 50th place to stay in it. That's where it's at right now. So if you finish 70th last year and you're a rookie, you got to finish 30th, 30th or better this year to stay in. Which is not easy. <laughs> not like freaking easy. 10 spots within the classic cut. Like and, you, and, and like maybe it doesn't sound that hard, but then you go start reading down the list of like... Yeah. No, Palinuk, when you get like... Swindle, Christy, when you get 48th, Hattie, I fighter. send you a good job text. <laughs> yeah, no, I, like, I mean it's... I'm a yeah. nerd and I watch it lots and I realize yeah. how hard it is. And like 48th, if you get 48th and in a tournament around here, like, yeah, you're, you know, whatever. No, it's no, yeah. you're not getting a good job tax, but something like that, like that ain't easy. So and, and right. that part of it, if you can make it, then you can, you know, you don't have to finish in the top 10 in every tournament to like, to make a living and to be successful. And, you know, but, uh, that's the best part of it. But that being said, it's not, you know, it doesn't sound like it'd be that hard to finish in the top 48, but like, there's not a lot of weak, <laughs> weak, no, you know, no. there's uh, it's very competitive, and uh, you know, you, you, we all, I think everybody has a buddy or two that they compare notes with and share info with a little bit, and uh, you just, you know, we get you get three days to go figure it out at each venue, and I don't, it's, you know, the toughest part for me is just like I live so far from everywhere, and and you know, you're seeing it now too, doing it, but like that's the toughest part is not getting to like pre-practice or go. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I could, I, I could make, you know, do it, but it would, it would mean, um, you know, missing tournaments around here in the summertime. And then in the winter, I mean, it's just tough to, it's tough to drive 20 hours and, and go, you know, spend a couple of days at a place when the nice thing about a three day practice, even though it's short is the stuff that you find is generally going to be pretty relevant. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and I've, I've got my time into it enough now where every year we get a new venue or two, but like most of these places I've been to. So you get some idea of what you want, you know, what you want to do 
maybe what part of the lake you want to focus on when you get there. But yeah, you don't have the culture shock like the first couple of years. Like yeah, just <laughs> show up to these lakes and be like, okay, where's a boulder I can throw my tube at? Like no, yeah. it doesn't exist. But like people ask a lot, like what do you do for like pre, um, you know. How do you prepare when you go to these places? And I used to like study maps and like do yeah. go like get every bit of info I could. And now anymore, like I really, and I mean, Chris and Corey are kind of the same. Seth's the same. Um, we'll watch some videos maybe um, on YouTube. I like watching the old shows. I just got a TV in my shop now. So I, well, I put, put on some of the old Bass Live shows and they yeah. you know they're seven or eight hours long yeah you don't have dial up the, anymore you can let no yeah I, I never like i never would have time to watch those but i put them on when i'm working on my boat or my tackle and yeah. um you know you learn some learn some stuff from those but i don't i don't put a like i don't do a lot of prep um before i go anymore and and we're not allowed any info which I, is awesome um flw we'd be allowed to get info up until a few weeks a month before practice and like yeah. it, it I would never, like, I got, I got help sometimes, but it, like one time, the, my very first year we went to Lake Erie and a friend gave me a couple rock piles out there and they were like, pull up and catch them. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, it never, ever helped me. No, I remember being in Texas with you and you're like, I got 300 brush piles and we're like, okay. Yeah. Like well, there goes half, half of a, one. Yeah. You waste half days. your time, like going running around and the same guy might've gave the same spots to five other people. Like it was just, it just it would never really help you. And, and you know, we're not allowed to get it now. And I love that, but it felt like when I fished FLW, if you weren't trying to get info, you weren't doing your job. Yeah, like, you know, cause like that. everyone else is kind of doing it. So you, you know, it was w yeah. within the rules. Um, but I, I love that part of it. Like not having to, to worry about it. Yeah. You guys got enough to do now. I mean, the, the pro angler now has got a lot more to do than the <laughs> than the guy yeah, 20 no. years ago yeah it is it's, so it's, it's but whatever you i mean happy. however it worked out you got it rolling good um you know the prognosis is looking pretty good for the northern swing i would have to say i uh i can't wait to watch you guys on wahi that's yeah I, sounds I like a gonna be probably a bit of a ned rig and a jerk shad deal so yeah fishing deep kind of if yeah, you're a fantasy fishing rat you might want to pick jeff for that one i picked in the last one Pick fighter. Yeah. Fighters spent, spent several days out there last year. He made a couple trips and, uh, yeah, he's going to show up there knowing what to do. Taku like pretty much moved there for a month. Taku's too, spent a bunch of time there last summer. He just went, the St. Lawrence went off limits yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, he went right after Pickwick up to the St. Lawrence cause we haven't been able to fish Canada. The last couple of years so yeah. since he's been fishing so he went he that. was going up to like i don't even know if the season's open or not i think it actually is catch and release maybe but he was just going i don't know how much he fishes but he pre-practices like big time and he uh, wants it yeah that's yeah. why that same thing like you know he comes from japan and like it's not luck. He's not lucky. Like he, yeah, he's... he didn't just land here and like, oh, <laughs> yeah, no, guy works incredibly super hard and like, and like, like he's wrecked. He he got a brand new boat at before like the on his way to Santee Cooper. Yeah, and uh, the first ten minutes or twenty minutes and like I was getting to the ramp in the morning and he was loading his boat back on. He smoked a stump and rode off his brand new boat like the first day in the water with it. And he still had his boat from last year. Uh, that so that that's what he's running right now. Crazy. He's hardcore. I mean, he just he's very good. And but he's he he he's he's fearless and like he's you know gets gets after it. Yeah, I'm still picking you over him at Wahi if you end up in the same pool, which yeah. you probably will because you climbed the points. I think you guys are probably pretty close there. You, yeah. I think you might have him by a bit right now. Yeah. Well. But I don't. Know. Yeah. He's he's uh he's he's his his smallmouth record is outstanding like uh yeah like he's top 10 just about every smallmouth tournament and this is you know the last two years that he's fished yeah these are a different breed though they eat different things mm -hmm. it's uh well we won't say anything <laughs> pick jeff um what's uh what's going on the next little bit uh i got a little bit of guiding a couple guiding a couple days a week uh yeah. and yeah just working on fishing gear Trolling try and make up. some videos you I, love youtube I hate, and hey. I hate it <laughs> i hate it but it's part of the gig so yeah i gotta do that um 
I do still do some writing, so I got a couple yeah. of writing projects on the go this week. I got to get done. Um, but yeah, Shoal Lake, and then just a few days after that, we'll head out to the St. Lawrence. Nice one. And nice then one. get back. Uh, gonna get to fish the Rainy Lake Fort Francis Canadian Bass Championship. So yeah, I'm gonna, not gonna get to pre-fish early for that, but uh, yeah. my partner John Peterson, he'll he'll be up there. He'll JP's get a little. He's coming back. Nice one. Yeah. Yeah, nice. so he'll be up there. He he lives for that, and yeah. uh, so he'll be practicing a bit. But we've been looking forward to the high water out down there, and obviously it's it's uh, it's no good right now. It's it's we got it bad on Lake of the Woods. They got it much worse on Rainy Lake right now. And yeah, I was um, talking to Goldie and like seeing the pictures and everything. One yeah. of our buddies, uh, Matt Goldmer, and his wife Alyssa just bought a place campfire on on Rainy Lake. So if you're thinking of heading up there, that's a beautiful super sweet resort. Spot located you know close to town yeah um, and you've got a you know a, a young keen crew that knows the deal on the lake like it's not like old school guys that are gonna go jig and minnow in a corner like this, this yeah, guy, yeah you know this guy's on point so check it out it's uh can't just call it campfire island sunset country outfitters sunset country outfitters yeah, yeah. but tough deal like he did they just bought this place last fall and uh the docks have all been wrecked and everything's flooded. It's yeah, been, there's water you know. like in the in the boathouses. So. Just straight nightmare that everyone's been dealing with. You know, two two brutal years of COVID, and then uh, the restrictions finally lift, and they get hit with the highest water we've pretty much ever seen, and the highest gas prices we've ever seen. So <laughs> yeah. if you can, uh, you know, and you're looking at a trip up here, check out these tourist camps. We're going to Lake of the Woods. Check out Crawford's camps, Indian Head. Lots of, lots of good places to go and lots of untouched fish for the last couple of years. So yeah, fishing's fishing's top notch. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna head to Wabagoon on the on the weekend for the uh, walleye masters there. I haven't fished that tournament in six or seven years. Gonna have little to no practice and just show up and I expect that with, you know, new sonar technology and the lack of pressure, it's probably gonna be pretty good fishing. Hopefully oh, yeah. good enough where you can just wheel up and start catching. So yeah. Uh, yeah do you right. go on the back lakes or stay on the on the big lake uh well you got to catch them over 23 inches now and i mean your best chance at winning i think is on the main lake but oh, yeah. i've never won it so i don't know maybe that's the problem yeah. back in the in the any over 18 days we would just go t catch 22 inches and get 11th place every year and well for a few years and we were happy with that so yeah gonna okay. probably swing a little harder now on the big lake so yeah it's fun fishing out there i fished a f i fished several tournaments out there but it's been a while been a while now yeah. um they actually had i don't know how many people remember this but the when the p it was one of the last years the pwt was around professional walleye trail uh they actually had a can-am challenge so they had a team of like 30 uh it was either 25 or 30 canadian uh anglers and then u.s guys so yeah. and we fished against each other it was a turn everyone fished you know obviously it was a it was a, i think it was like a 1500 buck entry fee yeah big derby yeah it was a big derby. derby and uh now at the time that was the biggest entry fee i'd ever i'd ever paid you yeah. know u.s and uh I, I it was actually right after kbi like i think i missed the first day of practice even it, the tournament was like uh wednesday thursday friday so we KBI ended on a Sunday that year, I think, and uh, or maybe it maybe it ended Saturday, but we won we won it that year in two thousand eight. So we partied for sure that night. And I can remember driving to Dryden on Sunday afternoon, and I I think I maybe launched my boat at like six o'clock and went out for a little bit. But yeah. Scott, I stayed with Scott Dingwall. Like we <laughs> fished together, we're best friends, and and I thought he was gonna like help me out a little bit more. He waited till I sucked the first day and then told me what to do. And I had a, I finished good. I, I ended up catching him pretty decent on day two and three. But. Yeah. Well, I, I always say about Scotty, if he'll never go out of his way to lie to you, but if you want to get lied to, <laughs> ask him where the fish are. Like you're, you know, you're barking up the wrong tree there. It's your fault if you, uh, if you get a, l a little misdirection there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. whatever, at least he'll shot at the Scotty. Day. But yeah, no, uh, but he did well. He finished third or fourth, I think, in that tournament. Kessler and uh, Wayne Wagner, they, they were like in the top five. Um, and Canada Canada ended up beating uh, the all the, like, and it was all the, like, yeah, good Parsons, Cavias, Chase Parsons, uh, Tommy Chemos, Scarless. I mean, it was like the best, all the best walleye anglers. Yeah. Um, it was pretty, pretty fun. It was a fun deal. Yeah. No, it's super cool. Lake. There's uh, 
there's actually a lot of good up and comer anglers from there too that we haven't seen for a couple of years just because the tournaments have kind of changed. But there's uh, there's the Jensen's, they're really good. Um, there's the the Kennedys, like um, you know Dingwall's obviously Sam. So there's just a lot of like it's a place that's producing some good anglers and it's it's going to be somewhere where we're, we're going to see some hammers come from whether it be in the in the walleye or bass fishing world so looking forward to going to their playground and checking out the derby and i i do think uh if you're from dryden uh i think the committee is is kind of looking for a revamp uh, they need some help i don't know if it's directors i don't i'm not sure of the details i know there's a little bit of a struggle there so if it's something you're looking to get into uh, maybe give them a shout. I mean, we're super lucky to have these tournaments up here and, and really grateful for anyone that, that gives their time. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's where that's at, but thanks for, uh, thanks for showing up to the corner, bud. Appreciate yeah, it. no, that was good. Keep up the good work. It's been, uh, been some good interviews so far and look forward to who else you got coming down the pipe. Do you reveal any, any uh, Anything in advance, or you just well, like to keep the, it? The boys surprise? from Lake of the Woods today. Stooner goes in there all the time, and um, they're is he your number one target? No, he said he'd come on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. He he was he's probably like I figured would be the hardest guy to get to a hold convert, of. Yeah. not get a hold of, just like get him to do it. And I guess he said he'd do it, so he's up. Um, we got to get Brian and Dom on from the tackle shop because they're like, yeah, yeah, they got a lot of good stories and. Our, yeah. our beauties and then uh i don't know see who wins some derbies i think uh i'm calling it right now that uh the jansons from dryden are gonna win the walleye masters so if they do then well, they'll, be, they'll be on that well the kid and i'm sorry like I, I i think there's two brothers they got a pro v bass i was talking to him last year i don't know who's who i'm not that good at that yeah but there's two of them and they're good they won there was two like covid tournaments i think last year um yeah awesome All right. Cool, man. Uh, yeah, like, sub, all that stuff. Check out Gussie's stuff. But uh, If you're following me, you're probably following him already. Uh, hit up his YouTube, turn him into the next Alec Perrick. I know he loves the YouTube and <laughs> would, uh, would like to get that pumping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Follow me on YouTube, too. Yeah. <laughs> all right.